Hello witches, wizards and those who I get to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made Aunt Petunia's pudding, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if it's your first time in the kitchen and you want to see more Harry Potter inspired treats, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, I'm a little bit peckish, so let's head back into the chamber to see what's next. Right, let's jump back into chapter one, the worst birthday to find our next recipe. <laughs> and we really don't have to look far at all, literally right after last week's pudding, our next sentence has the next recipe. A joint of roast pork was sizzling in the oven. Time to move on to the main course. Fancy recreating this week's Harry Potter inspired pork wellington? All of the ingredients, measurements and method are on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below the description. Now last year while we were cooking our way through the Philosopher's Stone we pretty much made every roast joint of meat available for the Great Hall Feast so this year we're going to try something a little bit different and do a pork wellington. Now a wellington is traditionally made with beef, mushrooms around it and then covered in pastry but this time as we're doing pork I'm going to switch it up a bit to use flavours that will really bring out the flavour of the pork. So we're going to make stuffing and apple sauce, wrap that around our pork and then wrap that in pastry and add on a few My Harry Potter Kitchen decorations on the top. First things first we need to make our apple sauce as that's going to need time to cool down before we use it. To make your easy apple sauce you want to start by peeling a large brown apple. Slice your apple in half to remove the core and then cut into large chunks. Now the reason we've left our apples quite chunky is because we want a bit of texture in our sauce. If you chop them too small as it cooks they'll just turn to mush and you'll have more of a smooth puree. And it's really really easy to make your own apple sauce at home. We're just going to add in the apples to our pan and cook them down with some butter and sugar and then we'll season them with a little bit of salt and pepper as well. Add your apples into the pan along with your butter and sugar. Lightly season with your salt and pepper and then stir through until it's evenly mixed. Keep on cooking on a medium to low heat until the apples have softened. Once your fruit has softened down, some of it should have broken into the sauce, but you should still have some of those nice apple chunks. We're going to remove this from the heat and pop it into a bowl and then leave that to cool until we're ready to use it. While our apple sauce is cooling down, we're gonna move on to making our stuffing. Now again, last year during the Philosopher's Stone, I showed you how to make homemade stuffing from scratch. So if you want to see that whole process, I'll leave the link for that down below in the description. Today, we're gonna to make a little magic shortcut and use some stuffing mix to keep it nice and simple while we move on to making the rest of this Wellington. Add your sage and onion stuffing mix into a bowl along with your butter. Pour your boiling water over the top. Leave for a few seconds while the butter melts and then mix through until it's well combined. Leave to stand for five to 10 minutes while you prepare your pork. Now, as you can probably tell from the title, the main start ingredient for this recipe is the pork. So it's important to make sure you find the right ingredients to get the best end result. I'm using a pork tenderloin fillet. It's gonna have no bones, so we can slice up all of our Wellington and enjoy every single bit. And also it's gonna stay nice and tender and juicy as it cooks in the oven. We're going to fry this off quickly just to seal the outside, start that caramelisation and lock in all of the flavour, but first we want to season it, again just to add more elements of flavour to the dish. Generously season your pork tenderloin with salt and pepper. Sprinkle over your rosemary and thyme and then massage it into the meat. Flip this over and repeat the process. Place your pan on a medium high heat and then add in some oil. Once it's hot, place your tenderloin fillet in bottom first. Once it's gone nice and golden brown, use some tongs to flip it over. Repeat the process until all sides are nicely caramelised. So that is the fillings for our Wellington all prepared and now we need to roll them. So for this, I have double lined some cling film onto my worktop. We're gonna lay down the stuffing first and get that nice and even, then our apple sauce over the top and then we're gonna roll that around our tenderloin. 
Spoon the stuffing on top of your cling film and then spread out to the length of your tenderloin fillet. Once your stuffing is nice and thin, spread your applesauce over the top. Place the tenderloin on the length closest to you and then use the cling film to wrap it over and roll it around. Twist the ends to seal it in place and then roll it into a uniform sausage. Place the Wellington Centre into the fridge to chill for 10 to 15 minutes. Once the Wellington Centre has firmed up, it's time to move on to the pastry. Now, last year when we made our steak and ale Guinness pie, we made puff pastry from scratch. So if you want to see the end-to-end -end process, check out the link down below for that. But this year, the Muggles have made some for us already. So we're gonna unwrap this ready rolled one, pop our Wellington into the centre and then fold it over and seal it up. Unroll your puff pastry and place your Wellington Centre along the length closest to you. Beat together some egg and milk to make an egg wash and then brush this over the pastry. Carefully roll the wellington, sealing it at the bottom and then flip this over onto your greased baking tray. Trim any excess from the sides and then use some more egg wash to stick them together. You then want to brush the whole wellington with some more egg wash. Now you can just bake the Wellington like this, but as it's my Harry Potter kitchen and we've got a bit of leftover pastry, I'm gonna use that to make some decorations to go on top. So we're gonna use a lightning bolt stencil to cut those out and stick them over as well as a few stars. Cut out your decorations from the excess puff pastry and then stick them on top of your Wellington. Once you're happy with the pattern, use some more egg wash to brush over the top. So that is our Wellington all prepared and now this needs to go into the oven to bake at 180 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. The pastry is going to puff up and go lovely and golden brown and you should be able to smell that sweet stuffing fragrance filling your kitchen. And then all you have to do is wait until you can tuck in. And once your pork wellington has baked through and the pastry is lovely and crisp, it is good to go. So we're going to transfer it from the baking tray onto our serving board, slice it up and enjoy. And our Harry Potter inspired pork wellington is complete. Wellingtons are best served hot with your favourite sides and of course lashings of gravy. But let me know down below in the comments, do you prefer the traditional beef wellington or do you want to give this pork wellington a go? That is all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. I will see you next week. I'm about to tuck into my dinner. Thanks Petunia. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs>